Welcome to our viewers in Nigeria, in Africa, and across the globe. It's the conversation on TOS Television Network. My name is Adesu Wawasi. And I am Sagir Ibrahim. Thank you for joining us. Thank Hello, you Adesu. for joining us. Hello, Sagir. It's good How's to see you today. Yeah, you too. <laughs> All right. We bring you um, the quote of the day right about now. At the first sign of pain, you need a solution that you can trust to provide effective relief and is gentle on the stomach. Try Panadol Caplet for relief from headaches, body aches, and fever. With Panadol's Optizop formula, the tablet gently breaks down in the stomach, quickly absorbs, and starts providing pain relief in 15 minutes. For fast and effective pain relief that you can trust, try Panadol Caplet. This has been Medifacts for Panadol. All right, we move straight into development across Africa, starting from Mali, where Mali's interim vice president has revealed that he has seized power following the failure of the transitional president and prime minister to consult him about the formation of a new government. Malian interim president Barton Dor and prime minister Mokcha Wane were on Monday taken into the custody of soldiers in what is described as being suggestive of a coup in a political twist. And we hear that um, they're preparing for the election, mm -hmm. and then again you hear that there's a purported sabotage. Yes. But um, the good thing is, he said, um, the interim vice president said it doesn't affect the election, which comes up October, so... He said, but we yeah. hope it doesn't. We hope, yes. Exactly. Okay, moving forward, in Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe's body is expected to be exhumed and reburied at the Hero's Shrine in Zimbabwe. Um, according to a ruling by the, a traditional court released on Monday, um, the body of Robert Mugabe, former president of Zimbabwe, who passed away in 2019, must be exhumed and reburied at the country's National Hero's Shrine by July the 1st. The decision was made in the absence of the former president's widow, Grace Mugabe, who is currently in Singapore. I thought they would literally let this one slide because the wife went to bury him somewhere else yes. and then it was back and forth. And then she's out of town and they're deciding to exhume him and bury well, him. Let's just let the dead rest. I guess, I guess this is what happens when you're a national treasure, so... Uh, yes, you're, okay. you become the property, property of, of the, the state, yeah, not exactly, necessarily. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think I understand it, but still. Yeah. All right, moving over to Uganda, where 48 survivors of Bashika from the 2019 landslide in Uganda have taken the government to court on grounds that it allegedly violated their rights by failing to put in place effective machinery for dealing with natural disasters. According to the Red Cross Society, the ground of the sub-country in the eastern region of the country gave way on December 3rd, 2019, killing 28 people and hundreds of homes destroyed. What do you think about that one, Segre? Uh, do you think, think it's a resp all of this is a responsibility of the government? Exactly. So um, this is the people being aware of their rights mm. and saying, look, the you government is this. supposed to be responsible you know, and protect our lives yeah. and our properties. Mm. And that wasn't done, and we suffered a catastrophic blow. So but it was a natural disaster. Having... Okay, yes, it's a natural disaster. But then again, the government has the apparatus to predict such disasters. And put measures be in it place. Rainfall, so typhoon, affected, yeah. volcano eruption, earthquakes, and the rest. There's always measures put in place to ensure that these things are predicted. Now, in a situation where this happens, and there was nothing done in terms of warning or evacuation to mm -hmm. ensure that at least to the barest minimums, lives aren't lost, yeah, you yeah. know? I mean, if the people wake up and there's an uprising and they say, look, we're taking you guys to court, then, they, then they're right. Hmm. I, I, I hope to see how this one plays out. Let's, I really let's hope to see how this one plays out. <laughs> All right, we'll bring you a new COVID-19 update from across Africa. TV network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live. 
Watch out for the latest update on sport and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV Network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. Being a journalist means in-depth analysis that unravels hidden truths, that question the status quo and fact-checks government. These criminal elements hiding under the cloak of surveillance contractors are the APC elements. Do you have facts to prove that? that? Being a journalist means waking up every day with a burning desire for peace, equity and justice for all citizens. We're being told that the choice you have is to take the lesser of two evils. It means patriotism, where the prism of objectivity and accountability. It means giving my platform to the masses to discuss issues that matter to them. Some of them, if they bring budget and the budget that they look, some of them sleep, they're going to ask how much you are on. I have it. Thereby shaping government policies and laws. My name is Osasu Ignatia, and I am the People's Justice. Welcome back. It is still the conversation on your Digital First Pan African News Network, TOS Television. And do remember, you could be a part of the conversation and via social media on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram page at TOS TV Network. You could also watch us live at www.tostvnetwork.com and catch up on some of our episodes on YouTube as well as subscribe and like our videos at TOS TV Network. It is the newspaper segment, and we start with the Blueprint newspaper this morning. And um, just Starting from the top, we see um, PDP APC Bika over attacks on INEC facilities. And there are a couple of riders underneath. APC wants to frustrate 2023 polls. Opposition. PDP has penchant for destroying democratic institutions, ruling party. And we go straight to the banner headline over there where we see open grazing. We will no longer tolerate attacks on herders. NEF warns. And we have a couple of riders there as well. Um, blame governors, selfish politicians for a rising crisis. Forum open to citizen-driven national dialogue to end insecurity. Others condemns attacks on security agents, institutions, and advises Buhari to pay more attention to national concerns. And all of this could be found on page six of the Blueprint newspaper. You could catch up on other stories on the Blueprint newspaper this morning by getting the paper. Okay, away from the blueprints to the Daily Trust, starting from the very top as well. States must pay their bailout funds, um, CBN insists. Two women killed during an attack on Emo police station. And then moving over to the banner headline on the Daily Trust, your complicit in secession bid, Northern Elders tell Southern Governors. Five, four riders under the headline says Northerners living in fear in South. Federal government should evacuate headers from South, that's coming from the CNG. Gabra Sheh, who lacks authority to make police policy statements, that's coming from Akeri Delu. Devolve powers to state Nigerian press organizations, tells the federal government. And then just underneath the picture of the day, um, tell us where recovered loots are, that's coming from the Soul Town. There are quite a number of other headlines on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Just get yourself a copy. Yes, yeah, so starting from the very top of the Daily Times newspaper this morning, CBN retains economic parameters amid Naira devaluation to 410 Naira per dollar. And on the banner headline there, reps query, reps query handling of $23 million slash 2.725 billion Naira by AGF NNPC. Um, and underneath the picture of the day, business packed. OML, OML 118, NNPC, SNEP, SNEPCO, other signed multi billion deep water agreements. These and other stories could be found on the Daily Times newspaper of today. And uh, the last um, newspaper we're going to be looking at today, the last front page we're going to be looking at today is from the Business Day newspaper, where you have 
the business day market monitor on top of her just right there and then to the banner headline on the business day newspaper nigeria officially moves towards overdue single exchange and just beside that one cbn holds interest rate over fragile economy recovery and inside the business day newspaper um, there's a special report on aqua bomb infrastructure and industrialization poor hearts in barrels of harmful oils and shells 10 billion dollars bonga project to proceed in 320 billion naira revenue boost to government you can find that story on page 29 of the business day newspaper. quite a couple of headlines today. exactly yeah. quite interesting everyone should get a civil copy actually yeah okay so if you want to catch um other stories you could simply get the newspapers and the di different newspapers um, just read out and we'll go on a quick break now and when we come back at this while we'll be taking you on what's trending on social media do stay with us always remember this man i have my to design really like box. you deserve a break you can indulge in a cup of three in one cadbury hot chocolate cadbury hot chocolate indulge now available in the 450 grams pouch Welcome back to the conversation on TOS Television Network. And you know, it's about that time where I bring you what's trending on social media. And of course, I tell you that you should be a part of the conversation. You can drop comments, observations, uh, you know, on our social media platforms, TOS TV Network on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can also subscribe to TOS TV Network on YouTube so you do not you know, miss out on anything. You're not left out. You can also stream our programs on www.tostvnetwork.com. Okay, back into what's trending or what has been trending on social media in the last 24 hours. So the hashtag unknown gunmen has been trending on social media or unknown men as most Nigerians will call it these days. Uh, so the unknown gunmen has been trending on Twitter following, you know, a report that claims um, armed men in the street of Oweri, as in most state, attacked a police station. And the report also claimed that the men before the attack requested passersby to go into their homes to avoid being casualties, which, you know, caused a stir on social media. It's like, do they really care about the people that much? So I'm going to read out a few tweets, you know, to that regards for you. And then the first one is from at Edward Chuka, and it says, the Igbo should condemn the activities of the un unknown gunmen in the East. Oweri, a once peaceful city, a symbol of Ngwari in Igbo land is now a shadow of itself, all thanks to unknown gunmen. If these gunmen and their sponsors are Igbos, they are not doing us any favor. And then the next one is from At Deji, At Deshogun. The so-called unknown gunmen, UGM, that were seen in Ori Metropolis today weren't unknown gunmen. Locals were even busy killing them. Southeast residents should ask some cogent question from Northeast residents. I don't expect sane people to support evil under any disguise. Um, XP Silver One says, people hail unknown gunmen because they actually care for people. They ask the citizens to enter their homes when they want to operate to avoid stray bullets hitting innocent civilians. This is actually something police should learn from them, not every time accidental discharge. And then from at Imo, Imo Omoran says, don't be celebrating unknown gunmen or any criminal organizations. It always comes back to haunt you. The people that were hailing Boko Haram one time have had to run away from the villages. It never ends well. What do you think about people actually, you know, hailing those guys, you know, for apparently or supposedly caring for the people <laughs> enough to not, you know, <clears throat> want to gather, you know, um, casualties of war? It's, I mean, it's, should we be hailing them in, in, in the first place? It's quite something. I mean, I look at this comment and it's unfortunate. Exactly. Because here is someone saying people hail unknown gunmen because they actually they care. care for the people. Are you serious? 
they care for the people and they tell civilians to go into their homes so they are not hit it's by stray bullets. bullets. So who what are you are doing on the street with the guns supposed anyway? to be attacked? Exactly. You know, this begs the question. Okay, so um, the civilians are those you're sworn to protect yeah. and you're a sworn enemy of the state. How does that work? How does that work? Because this is you openly committing treason, openly declaring yourself as the enemy of the state, and then people are out here hailing you. Okay. And by the way, the said people who are hailing them, praising them for burning police stations and them causing carnage in the town, in the town yeah. are forgetting something. A time will come when there will be no police officers and there will be no element of government or protector of law and order in these yeah, places. Yeah. And they'll be left with the so-called unknown government. Exactly. And when that happens, who is going to protect them? Exactly. Because things always, always escalate. Exactly. It's starting from them telling you, go into your house. Who knows what's going to happen? It's like the last person said, people who were healing, you know, Boko Haram terrorists, you know, initially, in the first year or second year when they started, say, oh, they're attacking government and all of that stuff, they care about the people, and now having to flee their homes, and now in IDP camps and all of that stuff. It's, it's just like the saying, the, the devil you know, is better, much better than the angel you don't know. I, know, I think right. that has come to play in this. I, I just think basically we shouldn't have to, we shouldn't be sentimental, we shouldn't be too faced exactly. about a lot yes. of things. We're saying, oh, we don't want this, and then this comes out, we're like, oh, we can, these people don't, don't care. I think Nigerians are but, but largely too faced then, about then again, a lot of if, if you look at it, you would notice that the people have actually been pushed to some extent, because mm. like, there is the point, there's always an issue of stray bullets hitting innocent passers-by who have nothing to do with the issues at hand. But, but even and people have always had a problem yeah. with the police protecting them when they need such protection. But See, time and time again, people have always complained that it has always looked like and it has always been that the police officers are just there for those who can afford them. Well, I cannot necessarily say otherwise, and I cannot necessarily agree, but I just think that whether they are known gunmen or gun known men, like I mean, Nigerians call them now, or, you know, care about the people, supposedly, they're still a threat to national security. And they should remember. They're still, you know... They have I, their own personal exactly. interest and what they are pursuing. Exactly. So which they is don't still really unknown. care. Because if you're adding to the issue of insecurity in Niger, you don't really care about exactly. the people. Yes. So whatever they're trying to do, trying they to say, to maybe get cautiously. the people. Exactly. And people need to, you need to open your eyes to a lot of these things. Yeah. Anyone who's a threat to national security, who's a threat to security in the first place, does not care about you. Exactly. That's basically it. And that's yeah. it for what's trending on social media this morning we're going to go on a break now when we come back we'll be bringing you the big story Size. Find it with the new Etel data plans. Dial star 141 hash now to get the plan that suits you. Airtel, the smartphone network. Thank you for staying with us on The Conversation on your digital first Pan-African News Network, TOS Television. And do remember, you could be a part of The Conversation by, um, you know, ch chatting with us, following us, liking us on our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube page, as well as um, on Instagram at TOSTVNetwork.com. And um, you could also read our content on our website at www.tostv.com.
network.com. It is the big story and today's focus will be on the ban on open grazing and matters arising. And the, story, the big story focuses at the matters arising around the ban on open grazing and restructuring with focus on the Asaba declaration, the position of Southwest governors and the Attorney General of the Federation, um, Malami Stans, as well as the President's reaction. Joining us to discuss more on this is Mr. Adeni Yikunu and he is a political affairs analyst. Thank you very much for joining us on the conversation today, Mr. Dini. Thank you very much for having me, and I say good morning to everybody listening to us and watching, actually. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. And so, sir, what is your opinion on the current stance by the southern governors on open grazing? Uh, the last time I checked, I know that uh, the governors of the south have a constitutional responsibility as the first citizens of their states to protect their own uh, despite the fact that Nigeria operates or that we have what is described as a Nigeria police that is controlled from Abuja, mm. the responsibility for the security of lives and property in the respective states, first of all, fall on the shoulders of the respective governors of the southern part of the country. Uh, I therefore would want to say that the position taken by the southern governors is completely constitutional and cannot be argued about. And if anybody speaks uh, contrary to the opinion or to the stance of the Southern governors, the person has a very malnourished understanding of what the Constitution has in its provision as a responsibility of these governors towards the people that they lead in their respective states. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, the Attorney General of the Federation, that's Abu Bakr Malami, you know, in an interview, likened the ban on open grazing in the south to banning the sale of spare parts in the northern part of, of the country. Do you think this yes. perfectly represents um, the current situation? No, Manami actually, I felt ashamed uh, to have heard such a statement from Manami. Uh, for somebody who is the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of the Federation, mm -hmm. I think that uh, you'd expect him to have a level of knowledge. So I have gauged his knowledge quotient mm -hmm from what you said, and I am utterly disappointed uh, because when you talk about people who sell spare parts in the north, there is nobody that sells spare parts in the north in another man's compound, on another man's premises, mm -hmm. or in a space that is not paid for. Everybody who sells spare parts has a shop or pays for an open space, and these places are paid for. But a situation where somebody who has a herd of cattle and doesn't have a place he calls his own and takes the animals to people's lands to feed and also feast on people's crops, mm -hmm. I think that there is no single basis for comparison. And it is disgraceful when we allow our ethnic sentiment to override our sense of truth, justice, and proper things uh, as it were. So, man, I maybe didn't say what's right, and I refuse to accept his utterance as something that anybody should accommodate. Mm -hmm because it's a colossal error made by the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of, this, uh, of, the, of the Federation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, finally, um, the President has also commented on the decisions um, of the Southern Governors. Uh, he called it politicking with serious security issues and an attempt at a show of power. Now, in your view, have the Governors violated any laws or rights? No, no, they have not violated any law. They only took charge. Don't forget, the governors usually get security votes. Mm -hmm. And we have always complained that the security votes they get, they should account for it. Up until they created Amoteku uh, and, and, and the other group they created that the Southeast governors have been food dragging over. We know that we have always asked for them that they should account for the security votes that they get. So perhaps this is the move for them to... Uh, formally begin to show us that the security rules they get from the federal post can be used for something to protect the lives and property of their people. Mm -hmm. So the position of the federal government is equally on a very wrong lane. And I think also that the federal government must be careful mm -hmm. because you cannot realize that there's a problem in the country that seems to have defied your provisions of capacity to resolve the problem. And the governors feel that the way to go is to first of all stop the people whose identity you have often said is a foreign identity so that we can know where these criminal elements are coming from. And on the other hand, they are complaining. So if you say that the bandits and those destroying are from neighboring countries and the governors feel, okay, let us 
take a very strong stand and see if we resolve this crisis and you are complaining. It seems the federal government is also very insincere regarding solving the problems of insecurity in the country. Mm. So I will not accommodate the position of the federal government. I'm equally not happy that such a statement has to come from the presidency, uh, who is, which is also very aware of the problems of insecurity across the state. And for our northern brothers and sisters that continue to take the heat of this nefarious element, I think the federal government should equally say that northern government should take a stand on that. In the country, for instance, we have in excess of 400 grazing reserves, mm -hmm. uh, the 103, 400 of that is in the north. All along that they have been having problems, why is it that the federal government is for dragging in more or less revamping the grazing reserves that they have in the north? There are only three of these in the south. So what I'm saying is we know from time immemorial that the occupation of the people from the north is actually much into animal rearing. It is, it is people's profession. We therefore must make proper provision for them to stop moving the animals. And in fact, it's been said by agricultural experts that the meat that comes from Nigeria is perhaps one of the poorest because you make the animals work thousands of kilometers. Mm. Why don't you just do things the right way? So that's my position. The federal government is wrong. Malami is wrong. The southern governors, they have taken a very positive stance so that we can help Nigeria become a center country. That's my position. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for joining the conversation, Mr. Kunu. Quite an interesting You're welcome. comment of yours. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Okay, so that is it for the conversation today. And do remember, you could keep, in, keep tabs with the conversation and by checking out our social media posts and also um, joining the conversation by commenting on Facebook, Twitter, on, or Instagram. You could also um, you know, connect with us using the following handles currently showing um, on the screen. Okay, so that would be it for the conversation yeah. today. And we hope to join you same time tomorrow. And I remain Sagir Ibrahim. And my name is Adesu Thank you so much for joining us today.